it is clearly a very bad time to be a Sri Lankan cricket fan. Frustrating and hurtful to see a side that whitewashed England in England about seven years back suffer such humiliating defeat. The contest showed the contrast between the world's number one white ball team and the number eight as Sri Lanka couldn't even put up a decent fight, let alone a win. Let's dissect the performance of the players to get an idea of what went wrong for Sri Lanka and what could one expect in the future from them. Let's start with the positives. Wanidu Hasaranga, the Hercules of Sri Lanka cricket. Due to the dismal batting of Sri Lanka, the English had the luxury of seeing Wanidu through safely and going after the other bowlers. As a result, Wanidu went wicketless in many games, but the little dynamo wouldn't let that keep him away from the spotlight. He kept his reputation as the best of Sri Lanka by putting up valiant knocks with the bat and keeping his 10 overs to as minimum runs as possible. He was the highest run scorer for Sri Lanka in the ODIs of the tour. Dushman Shamira This cricketer gets better by the day. He has shown tremendous improvement in the past couple of tours and seems to be in the form of his life. He is the highest wicket take of the tour for Sri Lanka, but his performances were let down by the batsman. His height and the pace he bowled at was ideal for the English conditions and he also used his slow ball pretty well in this tour. Dasun Shanaka He was in the best batsman on the park but he was very useful for Sri Lanka finishing as the highest scorer of the tour for the visitors. The right-handed middle-order batsman was constantly put under pressure as the top order was washed away very early in every game. Shanaka showed a lot of maturity in his batting and played to his strengths, but there was very little he could do all by himself. Dananjay De Silva The right-hander was unfortunate to sit out a chunk of the matches, but it only took one innings for him to prove his class. He was elegant in his stroke play and batted with confidence. De Silva was the only top-order batsman who looked to be at par with the standards of today's international cricket. Kusal Pereira Being the captain of the side and leading an inexperienced batting unit in England, Kusal Pereira should have batted more responsibly than he did. He was in fine form and was able to time the ball quite well but mostly got out trying to play unnecessary shots. Had he batted a little longer and led the team by example, Sri Lanka would have performed better overall. Benura Fernando and Chamika Karna Ratna the utility players of Sri Lanka on this tour, this seeming duo got their small assignments to good effect even though they didn't have the luxury of runs on board. Had Chamika managed a few more runs with the bat, he would have been an automatic selection for the next tour. Binura used the swing on offer quite well and troubled the English batsman even though he couldn't purchase enough wickets. Patum Nisanka, Avishko Fernando and Osha De Fernando These three batsmen were totally lost on the tour. They were completely at sea with the English swing bowling. With the dip in form, their technique had gone haywire and found themselves in awkward shapes while receiving the ball. Unfortunately, Sri Lanka did not have the luxury of replacements to allow these players to clear their minds. One does not have to mention the awful incidents and the trio involved to rate them with zeros. Even their on-field performances were as poor as their behaviour. Overall, Sri Lanka is deep down in a pit of defeat. They need to bounce back and bounce back real soon if they are to stay alive in world cricket. If not, they will fade away like Kenya or Zimbabwe. For premium content and exclusive member benefits, subscribe to thepopera.com today.